record. I don't know what that is. I can't read my own writing. I think I'm in the shot. I think so. <laughs> Sue's over there looking at me. It's always hard to talk to the camera when someone's looking right at you. But I don't know if it's a sprinkler head over there or something that's that's broken or if it's from the, the rain and the floods that we had because this is a flood basin there's water running there's water running behind me This is Sepulveda Basin Wildlife Reserve, and this is, well, it's the third time out with it this morning. We were at Han, yesterday we were here, and I'm gonna link those videos up here. It's really, really, really hot, but that's when the dragonflies are the most active. They're all over the place. I've had them connected in the water, had those that are sitting still I've got them in flight it's all just been an absolute blast So what we've got here is this camera, the biggest drawback and downside to this camera is you don't have a shutter door that, that drops down. And I, I think that's a shame. Canon, Nikon, they have that. And it's a real opportunity to get all kinds of dust and dirt on your sensor. And that's kind of a problem. One thing I've noticed when I'm shooting, I shoot in auto ISO, auto white balance, most of the time. But for this, that's all I've been doing, keeping it in auto. and if I'm shooting something and I'm looking at a series of say 20 or 30 shots, they're not all going to be the same as far as exposure goes. Some things are more exposed and some things are underexposed and it, I can't think that that's me if I'm shooting in auto.
but could be the limitations of the lens. Not really sure on that one. Um, the image stabiliz on stabilization on this, when hand holding, it could be this particular lens. I'm not really sure. And it could be a shortcoming on my side. I'm not sure about that either. With Canon, if I'm hand holding a short lens, I get great footage. This one, not so much, but I'll use the gimbal on the way back to the car. It's only gonna last a while anyway. Such a joy. I know. I like a mechanical shutter. I really do. And I've been shooting this with a mechanical shutter too. I don't care how slow it is. It works just fine. Another drawback to this, well, it's not really that big a drawback if because I'm not using this for professional events, is a single card slot. It would be nice to have a CF Express card. I really like that. But the R7 has two card slots. I think that's pretty cool. There's always an extra backup if you need one, but I carry more in my bag and uh, in my strap anyway. The viewfinder off to the side, that I was kind of, I've, I've used that before, and it was never really a big deal, but in this case, it doesn't smash my nose, so I don't get a red nose, I don't get that big red spot on my nose, so it's not so bad, and, and you get used to it real fast, just like everything else. People complain about the small size of the, the Sony body. No matter what camera you're shooting with, you get used to shooting that camera body. It's not a big deal. Grow up. I heard one, re one reviewer, one shooter, who does a lot of weddings say one time you guys come on man you, you want all these cameras to do everything for you no i don't want it to do everything for for me i can do it myself but i paid a lot of money for all this new tech if you're shooting an old dslr it's a lot of fun because you have to think about every single one of your shots and yeah you can get some amazing shots for portraits landscapes they're fantastic they're still fantastic but for fast moving wildlife it's a lot more difficult. Yes, you can get this stuff, but your success rate with the newer technology that you're paying for, that locks onto the subject and holds onto it, that's what you're paying for. That's what you want. The most reliable has been Canon. This is the first Sony I've used in a long time. And it's pretty good, man. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm really liking this camera. What I didn't like about the older Sonys is their lack of color. To me, they're profiles were flat and it didn't matter how hard I pushed all this the faders and sliders and everything they just never had any deep rich color the color on this one is reminding me of my old d750 with how blue it is and it's beautiful I'm getting some beautiful blue skies I'm enjoying that a lot I think those are my biggest things I've seen so far but I this camera is really really phenomenal I'm enjoying it I'm hoping I'm in focus because I'm seeing a red haze of everything around me, like everything else in the background is in focus, but not me. So, I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. There's a wedding that's getting ready to start over there, so I'm going to just flip this screen around and film going back to the car. So let me show you a couple more photos. I'm going to see if I can't get some of the skippers, a butterfly or two, maybe a duck. Let me show you some photos.
Johnny Pink, thank you so much for letting me share with you guys. Please give it a thumbs up. Going out tomorrow morning with Sony's 90 millimeter lens for some macro. Hopefully one of my flashes, a generic flash will work on that. Out or on this, which is Sony's A6700. <laughs> Wait a minute, thumbnail. I really like this focal length, this 200 to 600. I wish the Canon had that. Shooting it on a crop sensor, in this case, Sony's are 1.5, so I'm shooting at 900 millimeters, whereas Canon is a 1.6, you get that little bit of extra. And with wildlife, that's really what you want, is that little extra bit of reach. Keep it as wide open as you can, get in as much light as you can. That is one of the black saddlebags. They have to hover there long enough in order for you to get them in flight. There's people walking over there with towels. I hope they're not going to uh, bathe somewhere. Johnny Pink, again, thanks. Please give it a thumbs up. I'll see you guys out there, and I'll see you. I'm going to get some more shots.